Hello YouTube, uh, welcome back. Uh, Bill Griffith here. Uh, today I wanted to walk through uh, a new product IBM has for monitoring your infrastructure and your applications uh, called Observability uh, and the product is Instana. Uh, I needed to uh, see how this works on uh, AIX and Power uh, 9. So I'm going to walk through installing uh, Power uh, VS virtual server on IBM public cloud with AIX uh, 7.3 I think and uh, get Instana's agent on it and then connect that up to the Instana uh, single pane of glass dashboard to uh, monitor what's going on so uh, wasn't super trivial so I thought I might as well capture it here for others to benefit from and as you uh, so what I wanted to pull this slide up is is just give you a, show, uh, a feel for what the capabilities of the product is. It automatically discovers all of these 250 uh, observed technologies. They call them sensors. Uh, so there's an agent that runs on a host, and then that agent downloads all these sensors as it detects what's going on on that uh, uh, virtual machine or that uh, host, and then stitches everything together in an end-to-end -end hybrid multi-cloud, across premises, across technology stacks, across hardware, across operating systems, across container-based platforms like Kubernetes and uh, Cloud Foundry. And as you see here, it also supports uh, uh, IBM Power hardware, including the IBM I operating system and AIX and Linux operating systems, as well as IBM Z. So really cool product. And so I thought I'd walk through it. All right, so our first step is to get uh, an AIX system up, and so IBM has AIX on uh, IBM's public cloud. So I'm on cloud.ibm.com and click the catalog uh, tile, and in here I can go to compute, and you'll see lots of different choices here, um, including a mainframe-based uh, uh, virtual machine and uh, IBM Power virtual machine. So I'm going to click the tile here for Power Virtual Server. And the first step is to provision, provision an instance of the service. And then inside of that uh, service, uh, I can provision uh, individual uh, LPARs, which are um, uh, virtual machines. So um, I'm going to choose my data center. You see lots of different choices here. I'm going to choose a uh, uh, Washington DC and I'm going to scroll down and you see the various costs and I'm just going to call this power vs wdc and I like to tag things with my in, uh, name in case I, I'm working in a team and others want to uh, if I want to go find out what services I have uh, so I can remove them or clean up etc so then I create this instance, and once this is up, then I can go in uh, to it and create a uh, virtual machine. Okay, and so you see it is now uh, active, so I'm going to create an instance inside of <clears throat> this data center, and I'll just call it uh, Bill's um, AIX uh, WDC. And I want to uh, pass in uh, a key, SSH key, and then choose my operating system. I'm going to choose AIX, choose uh, the latest uh, 7.3. Uh, I don't need the fast IOP uh, disk, so I'm just going to go with the three IOPs. And uh, pulling is fine. And then I'm going to choose one... Um, one core. Now you know that the Power 9 has uh, more threads per core than the uh, x86 uh, platforms. Uh, so uh, I can actually do productive work with just a quarter of a core. Uh, that's similar to, you know, Public Cloud's uh, x86 uh, 1V CPU, <clears throat> one virtual CPU. So when I bump this up to four, or one physical core, it's really like uh, four virtual cores. And then I'll bump up the uh, memory to four as well. And I need to connect to it via the public uh, network. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to uh, provision. 
Okay, so my server is uh, back up. So first thing I want to do is actually set the root password and then just hit enter, go um, for root and enter a new password. All right, so now I have my password so I can close this and then just use my, uh, my trusty uh, terminal here. So copy my external IP address and then I'm going to SSH uh, into that as root. Trust the fingerprint. Okay, so now I'm in. Let's go get the agent to install on this uh, AIX uh, machine. And uh, what I need is a sandbox. And you can actually get an Instana trial. <coughs> uh, check this out yourself. Um, but I have a sandbox already up and so down here in the three ellipsis I'm going to click agents and then I'm going to say installing agents and this is AIX so it's a Unix system and I'm going to choose the specific I can do a static library or a dynamic library let's just go with the dynamic and then I say download and so you see it's in, uh, downloading over here so Back over here, I can um, exit out of my AIX machine and then I'm going to SCP that, my downloads, and install an agent, and 64-bit is the static, and then I'm going to copy it up into the temp directory, and let's just uh, paste that uh, AX uh, box in into the temp directory. And so that is secure copying up. And uh, you'll also note here in the instructions uh, that it recommends JDK 11. And if I go check my default, you'll see that the default is 1.8, so I need 11. So what I want to do is go get JDK 11. So I'm going to go in and search on IBM JDK 11 official. I want the certified version and you see the first link in Google search is a uh, IBM support page. Uh, and so I want uh, the download sites, uh, Simaru. And then I want uh, certified uh, edition. I want long-term support. I want AIX and um, I'm going to go with 11.0.14.1. I just don't like to be on the, the latest. So I want the JDK specifically. So I'm going to download the tarball. And so that's downloading. And then I need to get that up to my server as well. Now, one thing you'll note is. Um, I'm not using all the disk, and if I do a disk capacity, you'll see some of my disk is a little on the small side, so I'm going to add my storage. Uh, this uh, AIX box originally has uh, 25 gigabyte of disk, uh, but it's not using it all, so I'm going to ext extend. You see here it's only 20 gigs, so I'm going to extend it. Uh, change volume group and grow it so now you see it bumped up to 25 and then I can uh, grow a couple of these file systems change FS dash a let's just add a couple uh, say three gigs to uh, Slash opt where I'm going to put things. Do the same thing with temp and same thing with the root file system. So now if I go check out the disk space, I have a little bit more. Okay, so I can exit out of this and then I'm going to SCP that um, downloads my IBM Simaru certified. 
Okay, so those are both up there. So now I can SSH up. And I like bash, so I'm gonna change my shell here. Uh, user then bash. Exit out, log back in. Bash gives me a command completion, which I uh, helps type. So now I can go to temp. All right, so I'm going to move the uh, JDK to opt. I'm also going to move Instana to opt also. Should have just SCP'd them up there. So then I go into opt, I G unzip the IBM. Then untar it. Okay, then I can remove the tarball. Then let's unzip the instana. And then I like to make a soft link to my JDK as just JDK. And as you recall, my current version of Java is 1.0. Eight, but I want it to be this new JDK, so I'm going to edit my bash rc file and create a Java home environment variable. I'm then going to update my path to be that Java home followed by path slash bin followed by path also going to set command recall I like to see directory details and good so now I'm going to execute that now when I do java dash version I get 11 which is good. So now I have my Instana agent and I can um, run the start. Now I downloaded this Instana agent from over here. So it's already associated to this server environment. So that makes this uh, next step a little uh, easier. So I'm going to, to set this up and uh, make it connect uh, in. Uh, one thing I like to do is set my hosts, set my host name, <clears throat> and then I'm going to, um, I could start in Stana right now, but I don't have a DNS name and all of that stuff, uh, and I want to put this um, uh, server in a, um, in a data center setting. So I'm going to go configure a few properties here. So you see where I am. Uh, then I'm going to just leave the existing one and create a new one. I'm going into the new one and I'm gonna search on hardware and I'm going to uncomment this and change my availability zone to Bill's <clears throat> availability zone. I'm also going to get the um, host details and so turn that on and I can put in some tags here <clears throat> such as uh, owner equals my last name and then maybe if I have an app here, I could do, uh, I'll just use the regular file system monitoring, collect uh, installed software, let's do that. And then system ID, sure. And since this is AIX, I will also turn on this. So then I save that. <clears throat> then I back up a couple. And then I run bin start. 
and you can monitor this with data log agent. <coughs> and that will start and then it will connect to my server. Okay, so my server should have started and I can run bin status see that it's running. Okay, so now I can go back over to Instana and I can go to the infrastructure tab and I can search on bills a, uh, just bills. And I have here on the live setting, you can see I can set time ranges and things like that. And since it is live, it's discovering things as they're changing. So uh, this is real time. It's uh, automated. You see there's my availability zone. Close this and uh, it has my, I also have this running on Linux. Um, RHEL, in fact, Red Hat Enterprise Linux on uh, Power 9. And I have this running in um, Dallas. And then this is the server I just installed, AIX. So let's drill into that. I clicked it. You see here's the availability zone and then it shows you some details here and then I can open the dashboard and this is my server here right bills AIX WDC and here it is here shows me uh, CPU JVM memory some things of that nature networking uh, sensors logs all of that now the real value comes when you start going broader than just the infrastructure and start looking at applications. Uh, in this case, I just have, uh, uh, I just have the, um, the infrastructure stuff going on here. I went back up to the host and now you see this is a, uh, uh, how many physical cores and what operating system I have, how much RAM, and this is showing me my physical cores and as you remember I'm using a full CPU uh, memory disk drive capacity all of the various details of the infrastructure and if I had some applications on it then I could do this stack and see um, the individual applications that are discovered uh, Instana will discover and as you know in a DevOps world where things are rapidly changing and new components are being added all the time then Instana discovers that and ties it all together. So I'll have to show that uh, in another video. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. So thanks for watching and uh, look uh, out for new videos uh, on topics like this. Thanks so much.